PayPal. So Leo, Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Six cards from the Santa Muerte deck for Leo. Uno más. Page of Cups, so did they copus. Eight of Cups, Ocho de Copas. Ooh, Eight of Swords, Ocho de Espadas. You'll hear my stomach. I've not eaten. Don't want to fuck up my makeup. Yeah, I can retouch it. I don't want to. So I started with Aquarius when I finish up with Pisces at that point. I'll treat myself to some Ezekiel toast with butter and garlic salt and feta cheese. Okay. Uh, did I say it? Eight is Capricorn. Two of Cups. Those the cope is two is Cancer. Queen of Cups. Reina de Copas. My God, all this water. The fuck? Four of Cups. Cloth of the Copas. It's a lot of water. I saw a lot of water for Libra as well. Um, Libra doesn't like being in the water. Leo does not like being in the water. You could have some strong Cancer placements in your chart. You could have Scorpio as well. I'm not really getting Pisces vibes. I've seen Scorpio and Cancer, but um, wow, what is going on here? What the hell is going on? Okay, you're stuck on this person. You're stuck in this connection that's not progressing. The love we share seems to go nowhere. Tainted love. Yeah, I'm hearing tainted love. Um, you're all in your feelings. You're all in your emotions. You can't stop thinking about this person, even though the relationship is not progressing. You're staying in it. You're feeling defeated. You're feeling very pessimistic. Um, this person has a hold on you. Similar to what I saw for Virgo. You could believe that you're on a twin flame journey. You could have this person on a pedestal. You could see this person as your divine masculine, perhaps. I need to clean this desk. It's filthy. Okay. Please provide an energetic summation for Leo. Three additional cards. No bueno. Five of Pentacles. Cinco de Oros. King of Cups. Eight of Copas. The Tower. La Torre. And you can be rational. You can be logical. Fuck spiritualism if it's not improving the quality of your life. I was very blunt with my mom. A few months ago when we were living with her and her husband waiting for our house to sell in San Antonio. It didn't sell, so we're back in San Antonio. I told my mom this because she's always going on and on about her faith. She's a Christian. She's been a Christian since she was a teenager. She raised me in the Southern Baptist Church. And I told her, because she just goes on and on about it, I said, to be blunt, to be honest, I don't see what... Christianity has really done for you. I don't see how it has improved the quality of your life. I was harsh because she was trampling my boundaries. She knows that I'm not on the same path. We've had all kinds of conversations over the years. It's There's a lot of history. There's a lot of complexity there. Anyway, um, it didn't just come out of left field. I didn't just say this rude thing that came out of nowhere. There's there's a lot of stuff there. Um, if you're on a so-called spiritual path, uh, 
spiritual, not religious. If you're meditating and clutching crystals and watching all the twin flame stuff and you think someone's your divine counterpart, I got this crystal guide with a crystal that I got from uh, Amazon. This palm crystal I got from Amazon recently. So you're on this spiritual path. You're meditating until your third eye bleeds. You're swigging ayahuasca. You're watching Aaron Dowdy, Till Swan, Abraham Hicks, whatever. How is it improving? How is all of that improving the quality of your life? If you're in a relationship that's not really a relationship, it's a connection that hasn't progressed into a relationship. If you're not being deeply gratified, what's the value? What's the benefit? How are you being served? How is your life improving? That's my point. Okay. I come across harsh. I get all kinds of comments, criticism. Wow, this is the most depressing reading ever. Oh my God, you're so negative. Yeah, there are a lot of readers who are very positive. Um, I call it toxic positivity. If it's all light and no shadow. I've got a very serious natal chart. I've got a strong... Saturn Mercury signature my Saturn makes my Saturn and Gemini in the 10th house the house of Capricorn makes a tight square to my Mercury and Pisces in the seventh I just don't have time for bullshit okay I'm very uh, serious I'm very conservative with my energy what I put out what I allow in I don't see the point in doing the sugar coated um Disney Pixar kind of readings. I'm not here to aid and abet delusion. I'm not here to keep people in delusion. I have a few clients who come back again and again and again. I don't get a lot of new clients because I scare people. People are scared of the truth. They're scared of my blunt delivery. Not going to change. I'm 50. Um, I am very much who I am. So... There are so many tarot channels to choose from. I speak with integrity, I speak with honesty, and I'm able to sleep at night. I'm not trying to con anyone. I'm not being anyone exactly other than who I am. I'm being myself, always. So if this resonates at all, if you are stuck, if you feel like you're delusional, you're not being served, you're not being fed by this connection, by this path, recommended reading. Psycho-Cybernetics, Maxwell Motts. I'm going through this myself. I read an earlier, older edition years ago, and I'm reading this new edition methodically. It's valuable. It's about rational, logical thinking. It's about rewiring your brain for an optimal life. Tap into the power of your subconscious mind to improve your self-image, learn to use your positive past, set and achieve worthwhile goals, develop compassion, self-respect, and forgiveness, cultivate the power of rational thinking, discover the key to a happier, more successful life. Because tarot two can only take you so far. That's what I see for Leo. I am always available for private readings. All the info's in the box. Thanks for watching. Peace out.